Ready? Okay, I'm gonna start acting in three, two, one. I'm acting. Hi, I'm Jason Siegel, and I'm about to guess some of my film and TV quotes. Did people fuck that up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, gynecology is only a hobby of mine, but it sounds to me like she's crowning. That line was in the lobby of the hospital in Knocked Up. Granted, gynecology is only a hobby of mine, but it sounds to me like she's crowning. Is that right, Deb? Judd Apatow is my mentor and one of my favorite people in the world, but he also was a bit of a sadist, I guess you would call it, during this um, movie because he would line all of us up, the friends, you know, uh, for a scene where we'd have to improv, and he would say, one by one, you're gonna go in and try to be funny, and whoever's funniest gets to be in the movie, and I'm gonna make you watch each other. LeBron will never beat Jordan. Nobody will ever beat Jordan. Call me when LeBron has six championships. That is from Bad Teacher, and it is a quote that still haunts me. There is no way that LeBron will ever beat Jordan. Nobody will ever beat Jordan. Call me when LeBron has six championships. Is that your only argument? It's the only argument I need, Sean! I desperately want LeBron James to like me in real life, and I think that this quote may have actually offended him because it was on every commercial over and over and over and became like a thing. And I, I really regret saying this. Look, in my head, everyone kind of doesn't like me that much, but LeBron especially, I feel like, maybe has a grudge. Oh, shit. No, I need to be my L on someone's T's. That is from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That was an improv in a scene with Bill Hader. Um, I'm still really proud of that one. I need to be my L on somebody's T's. That's disgusting. There was a lot of improv in that scene and in that movie, yeah. Yeah. We cast the funniest people that we could find. Bill is as funny as anyone on Earth, and so he, he made everything funnier. A crossbow doesn't clean itself, you know. I said this? I have no idea. I have no idea. What is it? Whoa. What is your crossbow oh, doing on the kitchen table? The crossbow doesn't clean itself, you know? What is he doing? Oh, right. Five-year engagement. That's from the five-year engagement. There's a section of the five-year engagement that gets really, really weird. It was the best. Look, those movies have so much improv and so much of it is about chemistry. And we just had this kind of trust and sense that anything either of us did, the other person would pick up and not let the other person fall. And uh, it was one of the best times of my life. Oh, I, okay, I think I m know what this must be from. I'm not a gay pirate. I have sex with my parrot all the time. Okay, that came out wrong. I'm just guessing from process of elimination that that's from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. I just want everybody here to know I'm not a gay pirate. I have sex with my parrot all the time. That came out wrong. When you do something for nine seasons, there's a moment when you're like, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to be done with this because you know, it's like repetitive. But I look back at playing that character as one of the best times in my life because that is like the sweetest guy, Marshall. And he just loves his wife so much and he just wants everyone to have a real nice time. He wants the best for everybody. So I think of him very fondly. I'd like to see somebody else order that many cookies. Not likely. Name one person who ordered more cookies than me. I'm guessing that's also how I met your mother. Is it from Slackers? Oh, despicable me. I'd like to see somebody else order that many cookies. Not likely. Name one person who ordered more cookies than me. I just try to be in great shape for all the voice acting work. As we lead up to the start date, and then someone explained to me what voice acting was, and I realized how much time I had wasted. <laughs> I know what that means, but if I put my clothes on, it's over, okay? That's also from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That's from the breakup scene. I'm not gonna go put clothes on. I know what that means. If I put clothes on, it's over, okay? That's from real life. I got dumped while I was naked once. Just once. <laughs> <laughs> I was young. I was dating somebody who, who went away for a little bit. They called from the airport when they got back in town and said, uh, hey, I, I, need to, I need to see you. And in my adolescent brain, I thought that meant, uh, I haven't seen you in so long. I need to see you. So then I was waiting on the couch, uh, totally naked in like a Burt Reynolds pose. And she walked in and I said, I've got a surprise for you. And then she said, we need to talk. And then we had a breakup while I was naked. 
And the whole time I was thinking this is um, going to be so great in the movie I'm going to write in about 10 minutes. There's something that didn't make the movie that is real from the breakup, which is that about halfway through the breakup, I stopped. I stopped it and I was like, hold on, I need to put some clothes on. And she said, okay. And so then I went to my room. Picking out an outfit for the second half of a breakup is like the hardest outfit you'll ever pick out. I'm like going through my closet and ripping off clothes and looking at them and throwing them on the ground. And then I came out in a khaki pants and a button up blue shirt. And I said, I'm wearing your favorite outfit. And she just looked at me and knew she was making the right decision. Oh, I know this one. You're a beautiful woman, but you're not totally maxed out. I would say, honestly, you're a six. I could make you an 11. That's from This Is 40, correct? Yeah, Bodies by Jason. You uh, are a beautiful woman, but you are not totally maxed out. I would say, honestly, you're a six. Oh. A six and, six and a half. I could make you an 11. That was quite a day. That was me and my best friend in real life, Chris O'Dowd. Our only assignment, there were no lines, was flirt with Megan Fox in this pool. It was a really fun day. You always believe in other people. Oh wait, I'm starting to know it as I say it. That's, you always believe in other people, but that's easy. Sooner or later, you gotta believe in yourself too. Because that's what growing up is. It's becoming who you wanna be. You have to try. This is when I played the coach in Hoosiers in 1986. <laughs> nope, what's it from? Oh, the Muppets, of course. I was trying to think of when I was inspiring and it was either Muppets or Hoosiers. You always believe in other people, but that's easy. Sooner or later, you gotta believe in yourself too. The movie that I'm probably most proud of came from my guts and Walter, my little puppet brother, was born in my brain and he's based on my first puppet that I ever got when I was 12 years old. I named him Walter and I bought him at Puppets on the Pier in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm rooting for them. I am. I'm like, come on, you fucked up person, you can change. And they just never do. That is from Shrinking on Apple TV Plus. I'm rooting for them. I am. I'm like, come on, you fucked up person. You can change. And then they just never do. Bill Lawrence and Brett Goldstein, um, who are both geniuses, came to me and said that they had an idea about a um, therapist who was going through his own nervous breakdown based on the loss of his wife and was continuing to practice therapy while he was grieving. And I just thought it was such an interesting idea um, for comedy because I actually think rock bottom is a very, very funny place to start somebody. If you start at rock bottom, the only place to go is up. So you're watching someone pull themselves out of despair. And a grown man crying is hilarious. I've made a whole career out of it.